Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial uh, by me, David, and uh, I hope these are useful and um, <clears throat> let's get this straight to it. So what we're trying to do today is we're going to take a logo and make it look like it's embroidered on a t-shirt. Now there's a lot of different design jobs out there and sometimes you're you know you get some of these requests that you know hey uh, we'd like to get shirts made for our company and we would like to have our logo embroidered and we like to see what it looks like so you know you kinda wanna give some people an option and let them see what they're getting into so here we go here's a uh, polo shirt I found and all I did was pull in my logo and at this point, all I've done is rasterized it, which I can show you here, just uh, using the rasterize layer function. Uh, right now, it's already rasterized, so that's grayed out. But we've already moved to the point where we're just ready to make this look embroidered. So we have just a flat piece of art. Yeah, it may not be the greatest little thing ever, but you know it shows the concept. So I'm not worrying about positioning right now because I'm going to do all my effects directly to this logo. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is go to our filters and to the filter gallery and we are going to pick the texturizer tool. So, I mean, we can look around, and I don't want to waste too much of your time, but, you know, you can kind of see what other textures could give your, your effect of what you're looking for. Like, I'm not sure what that would really, you know, show for an embroidered shirt, but if you looked around and you went through all of these, you know, maybe you might find, like, meh, maybe this one might do it, but if you want something quick, you know, you want to be able to kind of make a go-to uh, kind of thing where you don't want to have to go searching for it every time. So that's why I kind of stick to the texturizer tool. So just a little feedback on that. So the first thing I would do is go to your texture. I typically go with canvas. I mean obviously that seems the most effective way to make a uh, embroidered look on a logo. So. You see, if you change it to sandstone, obviously it looks like stone. And if you change it to burlap, it gives you more of a burlap feel. And right now we're just going to go canvas. And it gives us the texture of the interlacing um, threads, basically. So we can get that embroidered look. So here you have your scaling. You know, you go larger, you get thicker strands, you go shorter, you get really finer strands. And then you have your relief options. Obviously, the more relief you put in, the more depth it looks and takes on character of, and the less relief obviously does not do anything at all. So you just want to find something that just gives it enough of a look to say, hey, Maybe that could look, you know, that maybe that looks like it's embroidered, you know, and you can just try out your invert and see where your light source is coming from. Uh, this, you know, the light coming from the right makes it look like it's a more vertical stitch. A bottom right kind of gives it a, a cross kind of stitch. I like to use the, um, what was it, the bottom, oh no, it was the top. Yeah, I like the top because it goes across just like this. And if you tilt, have this logo tilted um, for placement, uh, it doesn't it doesn't work as well. So you need to make sure that your logo is ideally uh, straight um, as you would present it on a piece of paper. And once you've added your texture to it, um, then manipulate it after the fact because it'll keep your strands at least horizontal to the um, to the piece you're trying to create and I'll show you that here in a second so I think we're looking pretty good um, again these are just quick tips to make you 
get that job done faster. And this is, I think, a good way to get this uh, type of texture and to get the look and feel you're going for. So just go ahead and hit OK once you have that. And then you can just zoom in and kind of see what you got. And, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but, you know, these tend to look pretty good after you do them. So here we go. We got, now we have texture. And, hey, it looks a little, a little good from what we've done. So, but what it's, what it's lacking, though, is depth. So this is where your filters come in again. Again, we are highlighted on our logo layer. And we're just going to go right down here to our, our FX button here for effects. And, <clears throat> again, I don't want to waste too much of your time. So I'm just going to show you what I would do. And I would go to Drop Shadow. I always like to keep my preview button on, which is right here. So now it's on. And then, you know, take a look at what I'm doing on the screen. So I have my multiply effect on, which is fine. It gives me a more realistic feel. You know, I may want to crank that up a little bit, but we'll take a look at that in a second. The angle here isn't um, ideal for what I want. And for the most part, you want your light source coming from the top left uh, to give the effect of uh, dimension. Um, it's, per, you know, it's perceptual information. A lot of people tend to go from that angle when they look at something. So uh, you want to go ahead and click on that degree. So when your degrees change here, it is pointing from where the light is coming from, just so you understand that. So right here, the spot in the middle is your light source, you know, or where the light's going to hit. And this is the direction that it's coming from. So right here, I'm at 127 degrees, and I kind of like the way it looks right now. And we're going to go down here to do uh, the distance. So distance is literally what you see here. It shows the, the distance from your actual art to where the shadow will actually end up. And for this, you don't want to go too far, actually not much at all. So I would say anywhere between one to two pixels is perfectly fine. You just want to give a subtle hint because for the most part, embroidered logos do not stand off the shirt. And you don't want to give that effect when you're trying to show this to a client. So distance, two pixels, one pixel, your, your call. But that's as far as I would go. Now your spread, is uh, going to be <clears throat> the uh, the actual uh, gain on the actual shadow. So if you have your distance out a little bit further, you can kind of see what happens here. So as you can see, it's got really tight dark lines when my distance is lower than my spread. And if I create increase my distance and lower my spread, you can kind of see how it kind of contracts and it expands based on that information. So based on that, you know, again, you want to keep these really minimal. You just want the slight effect of what you're doing. So we're going to just change that here in the dialog to two, and we're going to change our spread to one. And then the size, and you can go ahead and see it here in the preview. Obviously, this is the blur of the, the Gaussian effect that the drop shadow usually gives. So right here again, we're going to keep this pretty minimal. Nothing too dramatic. Again, we don't want this to look like it's floating off of the shirt. So we want to make it look realistic. So there you go. Uh, I typically keep these uh, quality the way they are. You can change the contour shapes here, you know, of how you want these to come off. Uh, for the most part, the defaults handle what you're trying to do. But if you do have a certain effect that you're looking for, you know, these do offer you other options. So from that, we're going to go back to our contour. And uh, noise is a function here you can easily use, but I, not for this particular example. I'm not going to recommend it because it basically just pixelates and, you know, raggeds up the edges there. So we just keep that noise down to nothing. And 
that's basically it. And once I've had that effect done, I hit OK. And now I have a slight effect of depth here. There's nothing too dramatic, but you know what? It makes it look a little bit more realistic on the shirt. We could go a little bit further here, but at this point, I would say it's pretty good for presentation-wise. If you needed to sell an idea to a client and you need to have that effect ready, this is a pretty good one to do. And the great thing about keeping the effect on the layer that you're working on is that you can move it around after the fact. So now you can really position it where you believe it'll work the best. And from this point, you could go a little bit further, and I'll go ahead and dive into that a little bit. But again, for, for the most part, this handles what the effect you're looking for. Now, the next thing I would probably do is go into the effects again and go to the bevel and emboss. Now, this gives it that kind of roundish feeling when you're... When you look at an embroidered logo, you'll notice that it dips back into the fab or the actual material of the shirt or the fabric that is embroidered. So right now it's an, on an inner brand, on an inner bevel, and this is an outer bevel. You can obviously see that kind of makes it look a little plastic, not necessarily realistic. Um, an embossed one, eh, kind of close. And then we got pillow emboss which makes it look like it's being pressed into the shirt. And then we have stroke emboss, which doesn't really show a whole much, but it's basically only going along the edges. Um, I like to stick to the um, inner bevel. That's typically a good one to show because it gives you that kind of um, rounded edges that you would typically find on a t-shirt like this. At this point, I would probably be okay, but we can go ahead and look around here and see other options. Here's a chisel hard option and a chisel soft. I, I, you know, either one is up to you. I like smooth. Um, again, the depth. This will just show like how far the stitches are actually rising above the embroidered uh, garment. Uh, and again, it's your call on this. Make it look realistic. You know, give them what they're looking for. Uh, your your size. You know, I like keeping it minimal, so not nothing too dramatic. Again, realistic is what we're going for, and this just kind of eases the the look and feel of it. I like I like it looking a little a little contrasty to the garment, but again, you recall. But from this point. I would say okay and say I think we're pretty good to go and you know just quickly looking at this I would be pretty hard-pressed to figure out if that was a real uh, embroidered logo on there or if it was just uh, made in Photoshop so I hope this was beneficial and helpful uh, to you guys and if you have any questions or feedback or would like a particular tutorial uh, please leave your comments below, and again, um, thanks for watching. Uh, you can also send your questions or comments to me at dlndesign at gmail.com for more um, you know, detailed explanations, or if you just have a question, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, thanks again for watching, and... Uh, keep on trucking, and we'll see you next time.